1950, 2.5 billion people inhabit our planet. 340 million of them live on the American continent, around 13% of the total population of the world. Slightly above 113 million live in South America. Each block represents 1 million people, and for each country, the number is rounded down to the closest whole million, meaning that many countries and territories go without representation on this map. And with that, we start time. Half the population of the South American continent live in Brazil. In 1950, this constituted to over 53 million inhabitants. Brazil had a young population, with a median age of just 19. On average, every woman gave birth to six children, but one out of four of them did not survive to his or her fifth birthday. Brazil has, since the time of decolonization from Portugal, had a bumpy ride when it comes to democratization. After establishing close ties to the United States before and during World War II, receiving military aid, helping Brazil asserting power in relations to its Spanish-speaking neighbors. Brazil was a democracy until the 1960s, when a military dictatorship was established. In the early 1970s, the population passed 100 million. After an economically turbulent time, the country returned to a democratic election system in 1985, and has since then favored liberal trade agreements and privatization even though 21st century presidents Lula da Silva and his successor Dilma Rousseff also focused on social welfare programs, seeking to reduce the country's high inequality. Both Lula and Rousseff's presidencies was marked by accusation of corruption, eventually leading to the rather sharp turn of Brazil electing far-right Jair Bolsonaro in 2018. The fertility rate dropped fast to below three babies born per woman in the early 1990s. At the same time, the population passed 150 million. The child mortality had dropped by 75% from the 50s to the 90s, and once again between 1990 and 2020, standing now below 14 children per 1,000, not reaching their fifth birthday. Economically, Brazil stalled during the 1980s and early 90s, and even though some development can be seen during the 2000s, the high inequality marking the Brazilian society is holding the development back. Life expectancy is up to 75 years today. The southernmost tip of the continent hosts Argentina and Chile, both with similarities to Brazil in their modern political history. After some economic success in the early 1900s, the Great Depression hit Argentina hard and was followed by a military coup. Left-wing Juan Perón came to power after World War II, alongside his iconic wife Eva. After he was thrown out of office in the 1950s, Argentina was ruled by a quick succession of leaders, until the return of Perón in the 1970s. After Juan died, his wife Isabel rose to power leading Argentina into economic freefall. More military coups followed, a war over the Falkland Islands, and economic troubles in the early 2000s. In Chile, the Marxist democratically elected government in the early 1970s was destabilized by economic sanctions from the United States, leading to a military coup and the rise of General Augusto Pinochet, who became the country's dictator for many years to come. Argentina started in 1950 with 17 million inhabitants, and had by the mid-1980s grown to 30, Today, the number is 45 million. The slower population increase than for their northern neighbor Brazil is explained by a much lower fertility rate earlier on, just over three babies born per woman in the 1950s. Today, while Brazil has gone below point of reproduction, Argentina has only slowly moved down to 2.2. The child mortality was also at a lower level than Brazil's at 1 in 10 in 1950, down to 1 in 100 today. Chile has more than tripled from more than 6 million inhabitants in 1950 to over 19 million today. During that time frame, the fertility rate had dropped from 5 to 1.7, and the child mortality decreased from almost 250 in 1,000 to 7 in 1,000, below even the numbers of Argentina and Brazil. In recent years, Nestor Kirchner, followed by his wife Cristiana Fernandez de Kirchner, led Argentina through somewhat more stable times. In 2015, Maurizio Macri won the presidency and has returned to more neoliberal policies. Since the early 1990s, Chile has democratically elected its leaders, and in recent years, the Social Democrat Michel Bachelet and the right of center Sebastián Piñera has taken turns for the presidency, with current day President Piñera facing protests during the fall of 2019. Uruguay has, after standing more or less still in the 1950s and 60s, seen a consecutive drop in child mortality and a fertility rate go down from 3 to 2. It has seen 
a rather modest population increase, from 2.2 to 3.4 million from 1950 to 2020. Paraguay has in the same time frame almost quintupled in population, to over 7 million, with a fertility rate as high as 5 in the early 1980s, dropping to current day 2.5. Both Uruguay and Paraguay democratized in the early 1990s, like their larger neighbors after a period of military dictatorship. Further north, we have landlocked Bolivia, who has gone from 3 million inhabitants in 1950 to 11 million today. Bolivia has also seen a rather late drop in fertility rate, being as high as 5 in the 1980s and 4 by the turn of the new millennium. Today, it's down to 2.8. Even though the child mortality is only a tenth of the number in the 1950s, still 3 out of 100 children do not make it till their fifth birthday. Bolivia has seen political unrest in the recent times, with the ousting of left-wing Evo Morales, who has been ruling the country for the most of the 21st century. A possible change from policies focusing on nationalization of natural resources and efforts to decrease poverty and inequality might be in store for the future. Peru had similar levels of child mortality in the 1950s as Bolivia, but today children are twice as likely to die in Bolivia than in Peru. The fertility rate dropped earlier in Peru and is today down to 2.2. The population has gone from 7 to 32 million. In the northern part of the continent, we find Venezuela, who after a series of democratic governments in the second half of the 20th century fell into economic problems, much tied to the economy being based on oil production and the fluctuations in exports that comes with it. After an unsuccessful coup in 1992, Hugo Chavez came to power in 1999 and set a path towards socialist policies and went on to abolish term limits before dying in office in 2013. During his successor, Nicolas Maduro, the economy was left in freefall with skyrocketing inflation and unemployment rates. Through faulty elections, Maduro remained in power until 2019, when he was contested by Juan Guaido, splitting the support from other nations in half, for who is the righteous leader of Venezuela. Only 5 million lived in Venezuela in 1950, a number that went up to 30 million in 2015, before the economic and political unrest forced large migration out of the country and the population level to decrease. The fertility rate has dropped from 6 in the 1960s to just over 2 today. Colombia is the second most inhabited country on the continent after Brazil, with 50 million inhabitants today. It has seen a similar drop in fertility and child mortality as other nations in the region, and today the number of children born per woman is down to 1.8. After times of civil war, the two main parties of the country, the liberals and the conservatives, came to rule together in the 60s and 70s leading to the uprise of many left-wing guerrilla groups with variously close relationships to the surging drug trade in the country. After decades of violence, the situation turned for the better in the 2000s, and in 2016, finally a peace deal between the Colombian state and the FARC guerrilla was signed, giving the Colombian president Juan Manuel Santos a Nobel Peace Prize. Current day president Ivan Duque Marquez, elected in 2018 on an anti-peace deal platform, has seen large protests and yet another civil unrest on the continent in the last year. The population of Ecuador has risen from 3.5 million in 1950 to over 17 million in 2020, and the country today still sees a slightly higher fertility rate and child mortality than many of the other nations on the continent. In Guyana, the population rose from 400,000 in 1950 to 790,000, while Suriname has gone from 215,000 to 590,000. In smaller overseas region of French Guiana, the population increased from only 25,000 to 12 times higher, 300,000. Although both Guiana and Suriname today have a similar fertility rate of 2.3 to 2.4, Guiana has a significantly higher child mortality of 3 of every 100 children dying before the age of 5. Overall, the population of South America has risen from 113 million in 1950 to 430 million today. Most, if not all the countries on the continent today, has a fertility rate below or on the point of reproduction, and will go into population stagnation or even decline in the coming decades. The United Nations medium projection has the population peak of South America as a whole in 2055, just 35 years from now. The share of the population under the age of 15 has declined from 40% to just over 20% in the last 70 years, and the share of the population 65 years and older has tripled from 3 to 
most of the countries on the continent is ranked as democracies today, with Uruguay and Chile ranking 15th and 21st in the world respectively. Only Bolivia and Venezuela is in the bottom half of the democracy index ranking of 2019, with Venezuela downgraded to authoritarian.